Bitcoin just hit another all-time high price of $40,000 on the 9th of January 2021. Now this is almost double of its previous all-time high 19,000 back in December 2017. In 2020 alone, the price of Bitcoin rose 300%, making it the best performing asset of the year. Now all the hype surrounding Bitcoin is back because it's gotten exciting and all the media outlets can't stop talking about Bitcoin, blockchain and cryptocurrencies. In fact, somebody actually made a song about it. But what does this all mean and why should it even be important to you? In this video, I explain very simply everything you need to know about Bitcoin in 10 minutes. Stay tuned. Hello friends, my name is Jeremy. Welcome back to the channel. In January 2009, an anonymous person or group of people going by the pseudonym Satoshi Nakamoto released a software online based on the idea that value could be transferred digitally across a network. He initially published this idea as a nine-page document which at the time was called a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. This software technology eventually became the Bitcoin that we know now. In 2011, Satoshi Nakamoto completely disappeared. Nobody knew who he was, why he disappeared, or met him in person. But he left behind this revolutionary piece of software technology, which we now call Bitcoin. So what is Bitcoin? Bitcoin is a digital currency called cryptocurrency or virtual currency. Now this means Bitcoin is not something you can print, hold, or store in a wallet. It's entirely virtual. Now Bitcoin is built on top of a software technology called blockchain. Now, blockchain is the actual reason why Bitcoin is so popular. Blockchain is basically a network of computers called nodes who all have the same history of transactions. This means instead of one company or database housing all the information, the information is now spread across the network. So when a transaction occurs, everyone can validate it and add it to the history of transactions on the network. Now, this really helps a lot when it comes to trade. Assuming you wanted to sell your smartphone, you would probably use some intermediary like a Jumia or Amazon or eBay to facilitate a transaction between you and a buyer who may be somewhere across the world. The payments will be processed by some bank and you would be charged platform or processing fees. Now with the introduction of blockchain, you can make payment directly to that person regardless of where you or they are in the world. And both yours and the buyer's information would be encoded using a process or technique called cryptography that makes sure that your information is not intercepted. Now that is how blockchain works at a fundamental level and I'm sure you will be wondering how do you even get Bitcoin? So Bitcoin is obtained through a process called mining and the people who mine Bitcoin are called miners. Now Bitcoin miners are people who solve complex math problems in order to create Bitcoin, which is how the founder Satoshi designed it. Obviously, solving complex math problems can be automated, which is why people and companies have set out large farms and warehouses filled with supercomputers with the sole purpose of mining Bitcoin. Now the reason it's called mining is because just like any other natural resource that can be mined, like silver or gold, Bitcoin has a finite amount. That means there will only ever be 21 million Bitcoin that can ever be obtained. As of 2020, 18.5 million Bitcoins had already been mined and are in circulation. That leaves less than 3 million Bitcoin that are available to be mined and released into circulation. It's even speculated that the founder Satoshi Nakamoto has 1 million Bitcoin that he can release into circulation at any point in time. However, miners also get incentivized by verifying and validating transactions on the blockchain network to prevent fraud. Now, there are some people who feel Bitcoin is completely fake and bogus. They feel it has no value and solve no real problem in the world. However, there's a separate group of people who believe that Bitcoin is the future and is here to stay. Now, regardless of where you stand on the spectrum, it's still a good idea to gain a deeper understanding of the technology. Now, there are two main ways that Bitcoin can be used. The first is as a medium of exchange or as a replacement for currency. 
In fact, the very first Bitcoin transaction is quite a funny story. In 2010, a computer programmer called Laszlo Hanya offered to pay for two boxes of pizza with 10,000 Bitcoin. Now, at the time, the value of 10,000 Bitcoin was just $40, but today, that will be well over 350 million. Bitcoin surfaced in 2009, right after the financial crisis, where people lost money and also lost faith in the financial system. They then wanted to find a way to keep their money away from the banks and the government. A similar situation happened in Ghana back in 2019, where there was the financial sector cleanup. A lot of people lost their money or had their money locked up in one of these collapsed banks. In that situation, people were then confused as to whether to keep their money at home or risk taking it to another bank. In Ghana and Africa, we are familiar with mobile money, which is what people resorted to using. And mobile money would be our version of e-currency of a digital currency somehow similar to Bitcoin. But mobile money is hosted on the network of a mobile network provider and ultimately terminates into a bank account, which is entirely what Bitcoin was seeking to bypass. Bitcoin's value as a currency is dependent on how widely used and accepted it is. But considering how volatile the price tends to be, using it as a replacement for a stable currency does have its limitations. More and more countries, companies and industries are accepting Bitcoin as a means of payment. But at the same time, certain countries have banned the use of Bitcoin entirely. Because of Bitcoin's characteristics as a currency, it does attract criminal activity. There have been several cases where Bitcoin has been used on the dark web to purchase illegal items for fraud or money laundering. Alternatively, Bitcoin can be used as a store of value. So people simply buy and hold Bitcoin waiting for the price to go up so they can make some gains and possibly cash out a profit. But one thing you want to be very careful of is FOMO or the fear of missing out. Most people have their attention drawn to Bitcoin when the price rallies and there's a lot of hype surrounding it such as now. So they buy when the price is high for the fear of missing out. But historically, Bitcoin has been known to crash back down after all-time highs, so it's very important to exercise caution and not be driven by FOMO. Assuming you're not a miner who extracts Bitcoin directly, there are Bitcoin exchanges similar to a Forex Bureau where you can purchase Bitcoin. Gemini, Coinbase, and Binance are a few of the most popular exchanges. Once you purchase Bitcoin, you do have the option to store it in an online or offline Bitcoin wallet. Once you set up a wallet, you will receive a security key phrase or word which you must keep very safely stored or hidden because that is the only way to access your Bitcoin. As long as you have your security key phrase, you can retrieve your Bitcoin even if you lose your wallet. In Ghana, there are a number of local exchanges, but I can't vouch for any of them, so I won't be adding their names to this video. But you can simply Google Bitcoin exchanges in Ghana and it will pull out a long list of options. But be careful of scammers and fraudsters. So friends, Bitcoin and blockchain are difficult technologies to explain in just 10 minutes. But I hope I've been able to share some insights on the subject that arouse your curiosity and make you want to know more. Bitcoin has risen 9 million percent over the last decade and it has withstood everything that has been thrown at it. Similar to the internet, we all didn't understand it in the beginning, but it has now become an integral part of our lives and it looks like Bitcoin is on the same trajectory. I'm keen to hear your thoughts and feedback, so if you have any questions, drop them down in the comment section so we can engage. Also, if you like the content, remember to like and subscribe for more of such. Cheers, guys.